My Lords, um, I put my name down to speak in this group of amendments the first time I which I participated in this committee because, as the noble lady Baroness Randerson said, this really do, these amendments do collectively really address a basic constitutional principle. Um, so I find myself in a slightly unusual position of standing up to uh, speak in favour of preserving current constitutional arrangements. Um, but I would pick up on the words of um, the noble Lord, Lord Thomas, that what's happening here is a chipping away at devolved powers. And those who wish to see the union continue, I would put it to you that um, squeezing more tightly, squeezing away powers is the way to ensure that people choose to slip away, slip out of the grasp. Now, I think the suspect we might hear from the noble Lord the Minister, as we've heard in so many other debates from uh, ministers on so many different subjects, that don't worry, we don't mean any ill. This government it doesn't mean the wrong thing. Well, I was just looking this morning at the situation and the debate around the potential Australian trade deal and hormone-laced beef and uh, animal welfare standards. And you, as we've said in that context to so many others, words are just words. What we need are guarantees on the face of a bill. Um, now, all of these amendments head in the direction that I'd like to see as heading, but I would particularly highlight uh, 41, 42 and 57. Now, the noble Lord, Lord Fuchs, said that um, his was not absolutely revolutionary. Um, well, as you might expect to hear from me, um, I'd rather tend towards the total peaceful revolution in terms of the amendment as it's written, um, says that there would have to be a delay before a devolved administration could be overruled. I would really question whether there would be any circumstances in which it would be reasonable for a devolved administration to be overruled. And so I'll bring up a point that I raised in um, second reading, um, a question to which I didn't get an answer then, so I'll repeat it then, now. Um, what kind of circumstances can the noble lord, the minister, give some examples of when the government might feel it's right, might feel it's justified to be overruled a ruling from a devolved administration in terms of when they've said no this regulations you're trying to impose in terms of professional qualifications, they're not good enough for us, they don't meet our needs. Because I think when we're looking at um, why there might be different rules in different places, uh, the noble lady Baroness McIntosh pointed, of course, to the differences in legal systems. And that's one very obvious area, a long running historic circumstance. But there are also, of course, practical differences. Someone before mentioned uh, driving instructors. Now, driving in the highlands of Scotland may be very different to hiring, driving in most parts of England. Maybe there are good practical reasons why qualifications may be different in different nations for obvious reasons. But also, of course, we are very much talking about politics. And in something of an aside, the noble lady Baroness Hayter referred to Welsh language qualifications for teachers in Wales. These are issues of intense political debate, intense political discussion. These are not merely small technical issues, things that can be ironed out um, by dealing with a few technical measures. These are political decisions that have been made by devolved administrations that have been given powers that are supposed to be constitutional powers that they are guaranteed. So I think, my Lords, it's very clear that we need to see change in what we've got currently in the bill. I think the noble lady Baroness Randerson has highlighted something that I've really been puzzling over. I must admit, in second reading, a lot of people questioned the whole issue of the assistance centre. And it is very hard to see how this works, how it all fits together for something so complex and so difficult. Um, but I think, as many noble lords have said in the debate this thus far in committee, this really does feel like a severely undercooked bill. A great deal of work is needed. Um, and this is one area where I really believe we have to see change. And I'm certainly, if we don't see change from the government, when we get to report, we'll be coming back in this area and you know, very much consulting with the devolved nations. We need to see that kind of consultation, that kind of involvement. And the first place where we really should be seeing consent from the nations is their consent, acceptance of the form that this bill takes. Thank you, my lords.